Serrated blades make for less effective stabbing weapons, not more effective. Hey folks, Matt Easton here of Scholar Gladiator and Easton Antique Arms. Now for anyone who's been following my channel recently, you will have seen and you'll hopefully be aware and hopefully have responded to the fact that there has been a consultation on some changes to the law in the UK. Now I'm not going to talk very much about that, but something has come up specifically as a result of uh, this debate, discussion, whatever you want to call it, and that is about serrations on blades. The reason this has come up is because that's one of the things that's uh, going to be prohibited. Not probably on this, incidentally, this is an antique 1856 pattern, Royal Engineers or Pioneer um, Sapper's Sword. Now, the clue is, is in that description there. So this is a sword specifically devised for the Royal Engineers, for sappers and miners, and it has a saw edge on it. Surprise, surprise, to use as a saw, nothing to do with it being a weapon. Now, you will notice it does have a pointy blade, what we call a spear pointed blade, because it is a predominantly single edged sword that is double edged at the back, and this end of the blade, about six inches, is spear tipped or spear pointed, because that's the bit for stabbing people with. Now, the Royal Engineers in the 19th century were all over the British Empire, everywhere from uh, the Crimean War to the Indian Mutiny to Egypt to Canada to Australia. And they were equipped with these swords because these were, first of all, a last ditch self-defense weapon. For example, if uh, they were working on mines and they got attacked by uh, enemies in the mines or uh, charged by uh, you know, cavalry or anything like this, uh, if they were building gun emplacements, this kind of stuff. So it is a last ditch sidearm or weapon. It is a short saber, essentially. Okay, so it's a short single edged sword that you can cut, uh, cut and thrust with, and it has a little handguard minimal there so it doesn't get too much in the way. However, it has a saw back on it because they are sappers, miners, uh, they're building bridges, clearing forests, building gun emplacements, this kind of stuff. So this is there for practical purposes. Now, have you ever wondered if the saw, if the saw back made it a more effective stabbing or chopping weapon or anything else as a weapon, why wouldn't normal swords all have saw backs? Why wouldn't rapiers have saw backs? Why wouldn't standard cavalry sabers have saw backs? That's because saw backs don't make them more effective weapons. Okay, and I have read so much BS. And not only have I read so much BS, I have heard this from serving police staff. Um, I have read this from members of the public who've read tabloid newspapers that have talked about zombie knives and said how these horrific saw edges make them more effective as weapons, which they don't, they make them less effective as weapons. But also I have been reading Hansard debates in the House of Commons and I have seen MPs who are leading on this topic and have very strong opinions on this topic actively state how these sawbacks make for horrific wounds. Well, no. What kills people is being stabbed, okay? Now, why does a sawback make for a less effective thrusting weapon? And it does, remember, rapiers, small swords, sabers, long swords, all of those swords from history do not have sawbacks on them, generally. The only ones which have, which have sawbacks are ones used by people who need a saw. You sometimes find them on hunting swords, and the reason you find them on hunting swords is because when you shoot an animal, if you have to humane dispatch it um, by stabbing it or cutting its throat at uh, up close range because it hasn't died from being shot, you then process the meat, and you use the sawback for literally dismembering it. Um, so you saw the legs off um, and you do various other things with the saw. And so you do find certain types of fishing knife which have not quite serrations like a saw, but that, that's used also in processing of the fish. So the simple fact is that the saw back is not there, it's nothing to do with killing an animal or killing a person. It's there to use as a tool. It's a saw. The saw back is a saw. So um, why mechanically does the saw back not make the weapon more effective? Well, quite simply, if you are stabbing into any type of resisting material, that saw is only gonna impede the stab, okay? Normal swords or blades, spears, any, bayonets, anything else that are designed to just stab into something, they have just a normal point because that is what's gonna meet the less, least resistance going into flesh and muscle and bone, but also going through clothes. And this saw back is gonna get snagged. So this pioneer sword stabbing into a, let's say a Russian opponent in the Crimean War, 
um, or well this is in 1856 so it's actually just at the end of the Crimean War let's say the Indian mutiny or, or something like that um, it's going to stab in that far when it reaches this it's going to stop this saw edge look at the way the teeth are going it's actually going to stop the blade going in because it's going to meet resistance so yeah you've got that much blade into them and that's what makes this still an effective stabbing weapon note and I will reiterate and emphasize this the saw back stops there for that reason the saw back does not go all the way to the tip because you still want the tip to be an effective stabbing weapon so what's a more effective stabbing weapon a kitchen knife okay and the fact is that People who are using stabbing implements in modern crime or the military, if you look at military daggers and military knives, they're like this. They don't have sawbacks on them. Okay, if you look at a commando dagger, a Fairburn Sykes dagger, no sawback. If you look at a kitchen knife, which is the most commonly used stabbing implement throughout the world and according to Kent Police is responsible for 74% of knife crime in, certainly in Kent anyway, according to Kent Police, 74% kitchen knives. These are very effective stabbing weapons. And do you know what are also effective stabbing weapons? Screwdrivers, chisels, um, ice picks, braddles, knitting needles, anything pointy and slim, which has minimum resistance going into a target. Arrows, spears, they don't have serrations on them. Why? Because serrations make for worse penetration. So there we go. I really want this absolute B. I I mean, it's even in the British House of Commons. People are even saying this like it's a unquestioned fact that saw edges make for a more horrific weapon. They don't. They make for a worse weapon. Saw edges are there for a saw, to make it a tool. Okay, something only has a saw edge on it to be used as a tool. It makes it a less effective weapon. So literally, when you prohibit a uh, machete or a knife or anything else which has a saw edge on it, what you're doing is you're prohibiting the less effective weapon and you're making people use the more effective weapon is utter lunacy. Thank you for watching. I have been Matt Easton and I hope I'll see you back on the channel really soon. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.